Hello, hello. As most of you guys know, I am going to Bermuda in a few days. But what you may not know is that I only have a one-way ticket there. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to run away and go live in Bermuda or anything like that. It's just that when I bought my ticket to Bermuda, I did not know how long I wanted to stay there or when I wanted to come back. So I only bought the one-way ticket. But it is my understanding, after talking to Nick, who I'm going to visit there, he lives in Bermuda, it's my understanding that when you go to Bermuda and you go through their customs, you need a return ticket home. They require you to have a ticket out of Bermuda. So one way you can get around this restriction is to purchase a one-way ticket home within 24 hours of your arrival to Bermuda. And that way, when you go through Bermuda Customs, you can show them this return ticket. And then right when you get out of the airport, you can basically cancel that ticket since most airlines allow you to get a full refund on your ticket purchases within 24 hours. Because I don't want to do that, it's kind of borderline illegal, I guess. Um, I'm actually going to pick a day that I want to return home and purchase the ticket. So that's what we're going to do on today's vlog. And before you shut it off, because I know that doesn't sound too exciting, watching me buy plane tickets, I have something very interesting that I want to show you that I came across when looking for tickets. So it'll be worth your while if you stick around and watch this. So in the meantime, check out this intro. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, hello there. Back so soon. So I was thinking, Probably the best way to show you this thing that I discovered when looking for tickets is to um, pop you into my computer here instead of, you know, like holding it up here and pointing to the screen, which you probably cannot see. So let's do that. Um, three, two, one. And just like that, welcome to my computer. Now, don't make fun of the microphone just yet. It has much better audio quality than my vlogs do. So appreciate it for everything that it's worth. Now, let me set the scene for you here. You all know that I have to fly from Bermuda to the United States. And right now, I am looking at flying into Richmond, where my sister lives. So that way, her boyfriend, Alex, who's going to be visiting that weekend, can drive me up to my parents' house in Pennsylvania. So let's go over to Google Flights here and look up this ticket that I'm looking at. So I was looking at a one-way ticket from Bermuda to Richmond. Okay. And I want that to be on Saturday, September 8th. So you do the search and you find this ticket right here for 227 bucks. A hour layover in Philly. You leave Bermuda at 322. You arrive in Richmond at 732. Not bad. But then I just had a curious thought. What if I just fly from Bermuda to Philly directly and have my dad pick me up in Philly, for example? I figured that the price of the ticket would be less than 227 bucks since I don't have the layover in Philly. So I did another search, a one-way trip from Bermuda to Philly on the same exact day, Saturday, September 8th. And to my surprise, I found the nonstop flight, but the price of the ticket was $426. So how does that make sense? And let me just prove it to you real quick. American Airlines flight 225, leaving Bermuda 322 p.m., arriving Philly at 446. That's the same exact flight that I would be taking when I go to Richmond, except it costs just about double to fly nonstop directly to Philly. So, so this is where I started to do some research and I came across this website called Skip Lagged. And this is actually a known thing in the airline industry. It's called a hidden city fare. So basically what a hidden city fare is, when you buy a ticket and instead of going to your final destination, you get off at your layover. So in this example here on the screen, Skip Lag explains that you can pay 250 bucks for a nonstop flight from Atlanta to Orlando, or you can buy a layover flight from Atlanta to Orlando to Dallas and pay just $130. So that's basically what a hidden city fare is. And although I do not plan on flying into Philadelphia, 
I'm actually going to take my flight all the way down into Richmond so I can visit my sister. It's just something to keep in mind for the future when you are looking for flights and you can potentially find a cheaper fare out there available. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that introduction to Hidden City Flights. Hey, Danny, oh, shit. You have to go take Mark and Jess to the airport. Damn, you're right. All right, I got to go take Mark and Jess to the airport. We'll wrap this up when I get back. As you know, Mark and Jess are going to Europe, and I'm taking them to the airport. So, picking them up right now. <laughs> I'm at the BWI Trail, which is a trail that goes around the entire Baltimore-Washington International Airport loop. It is about 10 to 11 miles long, nice and paved, a little bit of hills, but not too bad. And I figured it was a perfect time to hop on the boosted board and go for a cruise. So the boosted board extended range gets a distance of 12 miles, so that shouldn't be enough juice to get me around the whole thing. I, I think I'm going to try to get around the whole thing and see... Uh, see if it holds up to the 12 mile range. If not, I'm gonna be doing some walking. Full charge, ready to go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're about halfway around the BWI trail. Uh, I need to take a break here for reasons as you'll see in a bit, um, but this is a really good spot to come. It's the Thomas A. Dixon Observation Park. So uh, right behind or right in front of me here is where planes come in and you can sit here and watch them and you get a really good view. So we'll, we'll do a couple of those and then we'll start back up. But first let's hit the restroom. <laughs> Watch this, it's gonna be sick. Okay, we got another one coming, here we go. Ready? Every two minutes, they keep coming. Okay, I don't see one coming for a little bit, so I think we're gonna continue on the loop. All right, so just for the record, I'm about halfway, or I estimate that I'm about halfway around the loop, and I have two battery levels out of five left, so that, if you do the math, that's not that good. boosted board ran out of battery and I just looked up on my phone I'm about 1.3 miles from my car so um, it's basically going up over 295 there's a pedestrian bridge across the highway there come back down the other side and follow along the oops and follow along the path there um, and then that's where I parked along the side of the road right there so um yeah, this guy's dead. I, uh, I'm going to try to recharge it on the hill down because that's something you can do with a boost support. It uh, has regenerative charging. So if I hold the trigger in and go in reverse down the hill, that actually converts that kinetic energy into uh, potential energy stored in the battery. And maybe I'll get a little bit out of that. Maybe like, I don't know, a tenth of a mile at most. But Every little bit counts, so um, yeah, let's let's see what we can do. So yeah, this will work. Well, what I did was I strapped the boosted board between me and the backpack, so it's resting against my back, and it's not the most comfortable thing, but it'll do the trick. I probably only have like a mile left, 
and like I said, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do the regenerative charging when I go down this hill up here. So I'm gonna cross the bridge. There's a hill on the other side. So I'll try that out. The hill over here isn't as big as I thought it was. So, so much for that plan. Hey, hey, it's working again. Maybe it just needed a little break. It's still blinking though. Oh yeah, it's already dying. Not good, not good. All right, and that's a wrap. That was pretty fun. It's like, um, it's almost like, you know, riding ATVs or motorcycles for for leisure or for sport. Like, it's just like that, just going for a ride on the booster board. A lot of fun, not really an exercise routine. There's a lot of people out here running and biking and I felt like kind of a slob just zooming past them on the booster board with a, a motorized vehicle. But, um, you know, it's all in fun. I had a good time. You did good today.